lovelies, welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video, I just wanted to chat about Breda 3 2024 and the sewing plans that I have for it. So generally, I quite liked this issue. If you've watched the browse through, you'll know that I was starved for choice. There were a lot of things that I wanted to make from this, particularly from the vintage section which is a magazine issue that I've been trying to get my hands on for so long and now I have a part of it because they didn't unfortunately reissue all of the patterns that were in the vintage special. It's only a selection of them. I think it's about a third or a quarter. I'm not sure but we'll probably get there slowly. However, Despite how much I love the vintage section in this issue, I have to be a bit more practical. Gone are the days where I would just loftily go and sew the dresses that were stringing to my heart's desire. I'm a little bit more practical and a bit more grounded in the lifestyle that I live and in just being quite practical, which hasn't been a good thing. It makes it sound like it's not exciting, but actually it is quite lovely to build a wardrobe that works around my needs and things that go well together. I'm really beginning to feel the benefits of that, especially as I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I'm trying to build up on that. So what do we have here? Out of this issue, there's two things that I'm going to be making that are going to make a complete outfit. One of them really surprised me. So the first thing is um, the skirt. This one is skirt number 102. The more I looked at this, the more I realized how actually this is quite lovely. And I think that it suits in with my style. I like the length of the skirt. It's a midi length skirt. The thing that I don't like that I won't be doing, however, is the tassels, the dangly bits. And I'm not going to be doing the D-rings. So they have D-rings on the pockets and a D-ring here on just one belt loop. And in fact, in the picture they show you, the model is wearing a belt with just the the one belt loop and something is threaded through that now i i don't know whether i'm being silly or anything like that but the last time i checked it's very difficult to get a belt to stay with just one belt loop you need to at least have two minimum so i did think that that wasn't a very practical element to the dress just having that one little um, belt loop i'm not a big fan of d-rings uh, d-rings have never ever worked for me uh, at all so i won't be putting those in and also i don't think that d-rings are very practical on the side pockets of a dress that already has in sorry of a skirt that already has inseam pockets so when I traced it out, it's got inseam pockets, and then these are actual functional pockets, of which I do like the pockets. I think they add a really lovely visual interest to it, but I'll be using Velcro instead to stick them down because, I mean, even if they're practical pockets, can you just picture this, right? You're using the pockets and you have to thread the D-ring every time you put something in, you thread the D-ring. It's, it's just it's really, really impractical. So... Anyway, but I think that aside, I think this has got some very good bones. It's fitted and tapered at the waist and then it goes down and it's got that slit at the front that allows for more movement. So I do think that it could be elegant and it does have a hint of um, modernity in the sense that the cargo style uh, look aesthetic seems to be in everywhere. I seem to have noticed that a lot of younger people are wearing that. Not that that's the reason why I'm wearing it, because, you know, I went through that phase myself 20 years ago during the first time that it came into fashion. <laughs> so I'm not looking to do that. But I just do appreciate that it um, it is reasonably stylish. So I'm quite excited about this one. It looks to be a very simple uh, pattern to sew up. So I have it traced out. Let's see. Yeah, I have it traced out. The one thing that I did do is that my hip seems to be a little bit wider. Um, so I have graded the pattern from a 38 on the waist to a 40 
on the hip. And the idea is I can take it in if I do want to. Now, in terms of the fabric to actually sew it up with, I have this... Um, it's, it's like a denim, an elasticated lightweight denim fabric. It's blue. It's like a navy blue. Not like navy blue. And it's got a decent amount of stretch. And I think that you would need to have a bit of stretch to create the slim fitting silhouette that it does have on there. And yeah, I think that this is going to be quite versatile. So. I don't remember where I got this fabric from. It's been in my stash now for nearly seven, eight years. Um, but it's a huge piece of fabric. So I think I probably bought it from one of those places that was going out of business or somebody was selling it on Gumtree because I used to do that a lot. But yeah, so we have this one. So I think I'm quite excited about this. I think that this and the last skirt that I made from uh, Berda from the January issue, that's been so awesome. I've created so many outfits around that skirt. So it's been really, really good. The second thing that I will be making from this issue that I've already traced out is, where is it? This lovely top here with the raglan sleeve and that's blouse number 118. So it's this blouse over here. Now, for some reason, somebody loves the D-rings <laughs> and there's a D-ring on the pocket. I will not be doing that. I will not be making the pocket. I almost never use breast pockets. I just don't do that. I just try and make sure that I've got pockets in my garments or I've got a bag. The adjustment that I made to the sleeves was that I lengthened the sleeves because these, as you can see, they are just sort of elbow sleeve size. And I didn't want that. I wanted the practicality of them being going all the way down. So I added, I lengthened the sleeve as I was tracing it. I didn't just finish at the point that it said to finish it. I added the six inches that needed to be added to get it to my wrist here. So that's the adjustment that I made with it. With the top, I'm still torn between two particular pat uh, fabrics. So I have this lovely um pebble navy and white pebble fabric that i got from rainbow fabrics and it is so gorgeous and guys that would go so well together wouldn't it <laughs> actually that would really go well together but i also have this uh viscose so this style of blouse definitely will benefit from something that's quite drapey to really showcase those full voluminous sleeves and so there's this one, this Dashwood Studio fabric that I've been so precious about. It's in a viscose base. So very much more colorful than this one. This one's a lot more elegant. This one's a lot more Spitfire chic. I don't know. So I'm still stuck between these two to see which one I will be making. And those are my sewing plans from uh, Breda 3 2024, which I think was a solid issue. And I definitely would love to make more stuff because I've kept the line drawings of the things that actually caught my eye that I thought just fabulous to make. And at some point in the future, I'll probably get around to making them. So I'm hoping to be able to get this sewn within the next three weeks or so. And then I will show you them in the next month well that's it uh thank you so much for watching until the end now it's your turn let me know are you going to be making anything from 3 2024 did anything catch your eye in this one and also let me know which one you think would work best for blouse number 118 so this is the poly satin the pebble yeah the navy pebble uh, fabric or the splotchy the pink splotchy one let me know in the comments down below and i will meet you down there until next time happy sewing bye